and Cal BRE 01869452 and 1866775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take. How your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest, Jeff Ball is in the house, Friendly Hills Bank. Welcome. Ron, it's great to be with you again. You look great, and I hope you're doing well. Great to be with you today. Glad to have you with us. Let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you, and you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800 306 306 1990. And yes, of course, we are celebrating today. We celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio, especially in these times. We really need something to celebrate. I don't know that I would be celebrating National Ballpoint Pen Day. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to celebrate that one. I don't even know if anybody uses ballpoint pens too much anymore. Maybe just signing documents or something along those lines. National Black Cow Day, Herbs and Spices. I guess we'll go with the couple that make more sense to me having beaten anorexia. National Egg Roll Day, and I'm always good for a glass of iced tea, so we're going to celebrate either one of those. I don't know about the markets, though. Do we want to celebrate the markets today? There's a lot of red in there, although if your name is Musk, you're probably celebrating big time. The Dow Jones Industrial Average right now. It is down 139 points. The S&P 500 down only a little bit. The S&P is down 871. The NASDAQ, it is booming once again. It is up 4478. I've been watching that one a lot. Uh, That is an area that for for some unknown reason, it just keeps on skyrocketing. Uh, You got to wonder with all the things that are going on in our world today, that the NASDAQ skyrocketing, but Tesla had us up over $1,000 a share. Can you imagine? It was in the 400s in early March, and now we're looking at 1,017 as I speak to you, up 76 points today. I guess uh, Elon is celebrating. Oil down 25 cents a barrel. I saw that we had these stockpiles grew again, so that's an interesting one. 10-year Treasury down almost five basis points. We'll see what the Federal Reserve has to say. They've got their commentary coming out about 11 o'clock our time, 11.30 hour time here in Southern California. Germany, you give them your money, you still don't get it all back. They've got a negative 0.327 interest rate. Japan's basically nothing. So still the best place to put your money is in the United States. So we're watching that one for you. We watch all of these different numbers for you on a regular basis to see where they are growing or going. Anything else happening in the news? Did you, did you care? Well, actually, yesterday there was not a whole lot going on because if you wanted to watch anything on any station, basically you got to watch four hours of a funeral. And, you know, I just wonder about some of these things. Some of the things that are going on with uh, the George Floyd case and and don't send me the comments. I get it. We all are of the same opinion that it was a heinous crime and the officers involved should be 
prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but not by the mass media, right? The idea in this country is they are innocent just like everybody else until proven guilty in a court of law, not in a court of public opinion. And I know that that's not the common or the, 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 the fun thing to say. I saw 1,400 members of the NFL now have signed a petition uh, against some of these stupid things. I, 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 I find it fascinating because I don't know what this means. Do you, uh, maybe, you know, maybe I am just, I, I know I'm just a simple guy, but I'm going to bet that when these 1,400 athletes signed a petition to, to eliminate qualified immunity for police officers. Now, I don't know about you, but I had to go to Google and look up qualified immunity, and then I looked it up in four different areas, and I still don't quite get it. But qualified immunity is what they're wanting. Uh, you got to wonder about some of these things. Now, number one, do these guys even know what qualified immunity is? Maybe they're a lot smarter than me, probably are. But the issue becomes, are we going to get anything? Because everybody's getting, jumping on bandwagons. Nobody's looking for solutions. I got chastised up one side and down the other on Monday when I came out with what I thought are five common sense solutions to what we're talking about. And yes, I know that I have never lived one day in my life as a black person. But I've got a sister-in-law that's black. I've got a niece that's black. I've got other family members that are black. I can get first-hand or second-hand information because I've never been stopped for what they... I'd even ask, what does DWB mean? Right now, I, my sister-in-law says, well, we got a DWB in Long Beach, California. Okay, well, driving while black. Right, and I hear that. I heard. I told you about uh, Senator Scott getting stopped seven times in Washington D.C., and you know he's doing a lot of great things for the minority community. But what else? Why? Why do people get upset when you give solutions instead of just jumping on the bandwagon? I'm just going to submit to you that try, let's try getting together and solving the problems instead of just getting on a bandwagon and protesting up one street and down the next. I, I spoke with some friends here in, the, in, in our city, in Anaheim. $80,000 were spent, and I'm sure Ganahl Lumber probably likes the business, but $80,000 spent on boarding up businesses so that they could try and exist. $80,000 just on lumber. Right? That's not going to solve a problem. I'm gonna, I submit it probably caused more animosity than anything else, but... You know, we're, we're watching this. We are trying to do our best to come up with solutions. And I think everybody's going to agree that, you know, we, we're all one person. We're all one individual. We're not a, we're not, we should not be judging people based on their skin color. But we should go the other way as well. We should look at it and say, there are individuals, black, white, brown, I don't care what color, that want to be entrepreneurs. They want to get ahead. There are people that, want to work in the warehouse. I, I shared that with you. I had people that did not want to work the hours that I, ch I choose to work 16 to 18 hours a day just because that's my desire. There are people that say, you know something, I'm happy with my eight hours. I'm going to go home and have a beer. That's perfectly acceptable as well, right? But, you know, hopefully if I can do my job right, I should be rewarded more. We're going to talk a bit today a lot about small business owners who no fault of their own got pretty much I mean they got they got hoodwinked or or or, or I don't know the right word but they had no they had no clue they could not plan for having to whoever heard of having to shut down the entire United States for a couple of months right no one no one could plan for something like that if you're a small business owner you have a lot of contingency plans I, I ran small businesses my whole life I still do Right. You have to have a contingency for bad debts. You have a contingency for weather. You have various different types of contingencies. But who has a contingency for shutting down the United States economy? Right? I'm not sure, but I, I don't think anybody's ever done it before. Right. And now we're coming out of it. And, and I'm, I'm going to submit and we're going to talk with Jeff Ball, Friendly Hills Bank, a lot today about this concept that the federal government whether you like what they did, whether it, whether it helped you, didn't help you, whether you you got your stimulus, I call it a relief check or not, 
They came out with a plan in a very, very short period of time and executed that plan. Now, I've told you before, I have friends that worked for the Small Business Administration. They're talking about having done more loans in a you know, a couple of weeks than they did in many, many years. And it was all done based on a program that was rolled out in a week, maybe less than a week. Well, there's, a, there's going to be people, people that are, especially in an election year, they're going to jump on a bandwagon and say, well, you, you benefited the rich. Well, rich individuals take more risks, so they, they should get benefited more. They also probably lost a lot more through the process. There's a lot of people that did not des- that, that got more money on unemployment than if they were fully employed. That happens as well. There's no way. How can you go through and, and put a contingency? If you want to get the money out to the people quickly, how do you put a contingency in that says that your unemployment cannot exceed your salary from your last tax return? That's overwhelming. It's not possible. Have 40 million people that went on unemployment in a, in a month period how do you manage that? It's ne- we've never seen unemployment numbers like those, or maybe in, in the, actually, the, the percentages were probably higher in the Great Depression, but the total numbers of, of applications were not that high, or not as high, not that, I mean, they were extremely high, but not as, as many people. So you can't put a contingency in for every possible scenario, especially when you've got people that are trying to manage a pandemic and an economy and livelihood and mortgages. I mean, I told you the day that the governor came out with his for, his uh, foreclosure plan that it was going to be disastrous, right? But he only had one thing that he's worrying about. He's not worrying about the entire economy like the feds were doing. And I submit sometimes these people come out with a good idea but they don't talk to enough people to find out what are the unintended consequences. And I think right now we're going to start learning about unintended consequences of the payroll protection plan. We're going to learn about unintended consequences of the, the disaster relief programs. Those are all applications that people got money. And is it going to all follow, follow through in a very, very smooth manner? My guess is no. But hey, I'm just a simple guy. I'm just going to say that we've got to be patient. We've got to understand that this was done with good intentions. And I know that I'm, I don't have the, the consensus opinion. I think that the president and the administration tried to do something, tried to help the American people. They won't get credit for it, but we're going to continue watching it. And we're going to talk more about that this morning. That is our subject today. The PPP loan program and forgiveness options, how do we get a go through about it? Got the money. Hopefully, you got some money out of that and your business is surviving. I know that you're not thriving right now, but I hope you will be thriving. But we're going to talk about how do you convert those programs from a great loan. And, and I'm going to say that I don't know. One of them has a one. If you don't get the forgiveness, it's a 1% interest rate. Right. That's a great, great loan. Even if you didn't get the forgiveness, the forgiveness is even better. We're going to talk about all of that and more. We're going to talk about are we in a recession? Does it matter? We're going to talk about that. Does it mean that there's going to be a housing crash? You reach me any time. Our off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. But the replay is available, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. In the middle of our streets, our Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text Text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? 
The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037 and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or any time at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Gold Star has the programs and the products. They've got most of them. They're not all back yet, but they've got a lot of those programs. Let's take a look at what's happening in the mortgage world right now. We always start off that check with what's going on in the markets because that's what drives so much. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now down 146 points. NASDAQ is up 61. S&P 500 down 8.31. Ten-year Treasury yield is down five basis points. So that means we're getting a 0.78% return on the ten-year Treasury. Didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of excitement over that yesterday. Mortgage-backed securities are up 11 basis points today. That means interest rates are down just a little bit on mortgage rates. All that information is readily available on that super secret website, google.com. The question that we answer every morning is, why is this happening? What's going on with it? Well, Bureau of Economic Research says that the economy was already declining toward the end of February before COVID. This is what we've been forecasting all along. They say we might have even been in a recession at that point as well. So we'll see if that c- comes to pass when we get those two quarters of GDP numbers. I would submit second quarter is definitely going to be showing a recession, being that we shut the economy down completely for a good portion of it. The Fed meeting again concludes its two days there today. 11 o'clock our time, we're going to get the press conference by Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. Don't expect the Fed to change the interest rate policy. However, their comments frequently move the markets. The Fed is actually buying $4.5 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities today, as they're doing all week. Do we continue to need the Federal Reserve to be buying $20 billion in mortgage-backed securities? We'll see. Refinance is up 11% and are up 80% year over year. Refinance share of the mortgage activity increased to 61.3%. A lot of people out there refinancing. If you have not looked at that yet, you should. Core reading, the CPI, I guess we should start off. CPI measures inflation at the consumer level. Came in at a negative 0.1% in the month of May. The year over year reading decreased from 03 
20.1. Core reading strips out food and energy, dropped by 0.1% month over month. Year over year reading decreased from 1.4 to 1.2. Again, speak to the soft economy with no pricing pressure. Within the report, this is a biggie, rents of primary residents dropped from 3.7 to 3.5%, showing that there is less demand and lack of pricing pressure for rent, which makes sense with people moving out of the city, living and into the suburbs. Just a thought for you. That's the Mortgage Minute again, brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. Let's get into our content for today. Chatting about the PPP program and the loan forgiveness on that and the EIDL program, all from the small business. Now, what was your best source of getting a, a loan? We saw that because of some of the problems in the past, Wells Fargo dropped out pretty quick. It was the community bankers that were the ones that really picked up the ball here and carried these programs. And we are fortunate enough to have one of those community bankers. Jeff Ball is with us. Welcome. Hi, Ron. Glad to have you with us. So uh, I, I guess you've had a pretty quiet time during this whole uh, quarantine and pandemic. You've probably been able to get some vacation hours in, a little boating time. But wouldn't, that, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? And as you can see, I'm still working from my home office. But yes, it's been a very busy time. You commented earlier about the sheer volume of this program and how it far exceeds anything that SBA has done in the past. Going into this week, Ron, under the PPP program, $4.5 million loans, 4.5 million loans have been funded. And that's about 511 billion that has been issued by just about 5,500 lenders. So this is government loan program on steroids and it happened very fast, a lot of money getting out into the economy, but targeted towards small businesses, which are such a key factor in our economy. And I know you understand that, but it's the small businesses that really drive our communities. And that's why community banks like ours that are relationship focused, working with their communities are so vital during times like these. We're always vital, but especially right now with what's going on. I think a lot of people are going to learn a lesson right now. And, you know, I'm not going to bash big banks or, or promote big banks. But the key word out of everything you just said there, right, that to me, because it's kind of how I run my businesses as well, is all about the relationship. Right? I mean, you probably have people that walk in. I mean, I walk into to several banks, and they may know me. I mean, I've got a, a, a face for radio, so they may or may not know me. Right. But I think when people come into a community bank, they, they're probably known by the, the people there. Ron, one of the wonderful things about our banking system in the United States is people have a lot of choices. And so just like in mortgage lending, you have your high volume shops and you have your lower volume, more relationship type shops. And fortunately, we have a banking system that still supports both models. So it's really a matter of choice for people in terms of how they want to handle their banking relationship. And I know during good times, people often put less importance on having that direct relationship with the decision makers within their banks and tend to go more towards convenience. And I applaud both models. I think they both serve a great service to our economy. Uh, we just choose to do things a little bit differently as a community bank and focus more on relationship. It's not for everybody. But especially for those small business owners, we can be a valuable partner for them. And that's certainly played out through the experience of this PPP program over the last several weeks. Is there a benefit if I am a small business to having a relationship with both the big bank and the community bank? Well, it depends on the type of business that you operate. But I would represent to you that most all of the features that you would look for in a larger bank you can access through a smaller bank. We have the appropriate channels in place to be able to serve all of your banking needs. What we don't have is the branch on every corner. And for people that do like to go into the bank and stand in line anywhere in the country, that is a convenience. But in terms of online capabilities and product capabilities, they're really in today's world, there's very little difference in terms of the capabilities between a large bank and a small bank. 
That's good to know because you see, you wonder about it because I look at, um, you know, I, I've had relationships with a couple of different big banks and one of the big banks has significantly better online, for my purposes, online capacity than one of the other big banks. And when you say that the, the community banks have access to some of these same different features, I guess it depends on what you need. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, especially through the continued innovation of technology, small banks have access to platforms that are very competitive with what the larger banks are using. And I'm actually on the board of one of those companies that provides such services for community banks across the country. And the technology capabilities that we have, what you can find in the capabilities on my website, will be very comparable to what you can find with the larger bank. We just do it in a different way, which is more relationship focused and not so much driven on volume. We're a small business. And so I think that makes us even more qualified to understand the pressures of having a small business, especially with what's going on today. So are you able to, to serve the people? How, how are your being, you know, you are the small, small business, the, the community bank. How do people co communicate with you during this time? I mean, you know, you know I, I go to a big bank and they're, they're at a skeleton crew, hard to do business with. Are you, and you had mentioned that you're working from a home office. Uh, are people able to still get, get in touch with you? Oh, absolutely. And so we do have people that are in the offices. When you call our bank, a live person actually answers the phone and Which is uh, right. they can direct you to where you need to go, whether it's a question in regards to your deposit account or something in regards to online banking or a question related to the PPP loan that maybe you got from us. We're able to direct and I've been busier than ever just because I'm physically located at home for much of the day. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm inaccessible. So technology is a wonderful thing and we find ways that we can utilize it to continue having that type of relationship type service that we've been known for. I guess when you pick up a phone and or you answer an email or a text message, nobody really knows the difference. Are, are you at home? Or are you in the office? Are you sitting right next to them? Uh, no one knows. No one cares as long as they get a solution. You know, it really doesn't matter. And that's part of what we've learned with a lot of this technology. Look here, you and I, normally we would do this sitting together in your studio. And I miss that. But the fact is, we haven't missed a beat, right? You have not missed a beat with your show and your content. And most businesses, especially for small banks like ours, we haven't missed a beat. We are on top of it. We are there for our clients. We're probably spending more hours than ever in trying to work with people and find the answers and especially around this PPP program because it's a standardized program. They tried to build a box to fit all small businesses. And one of the important keys to small business banking is the fact that every business is unique. So for us, normally working to standardize uh, or, or not standardize, but to, to custom build loan programs around the needs of a business, we now have to do this under a standardized model. And that can be very frustrating for us and the borrower. But we take the extra time to work with them to help understand their situation and how it works with the existing guidelines that are in place. Great information. I love the idea. I'm, I'm a big, big believer in the relationship model. I'm not a fan of the online, especially when you're coming, when you're talking about money. Um, I submit that the small business owner, and I'm, I know this is not going to be a popular belief, but I've owned enough small businesses and I've talked to a lot of them. We're, we're very good at doing what we do. And there's a lot of things that we have no clue about. And we, the relationship can certainly help. And I'm a, I'm a big, big believer in that relationship model. We're going to talk more with Jeff Ball when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. We'll chat about that. Is a recession here? Yes. Does that mean a housing crash? No. We'll talk about that and more about the PPP program and loan forgiveness. We're going to dig into that deep in just a minute. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Our house in the middle of our street. Our house. 
Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest-only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Eagle Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Real-time real estate segment today brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564 SLT Home Digest. Get it? It's free. Is a recession here? Yes. Does that mean a housing crash? Absolutely not. On Monday, the National Bureau of Economic Research announced that the U.S. economy is officially in a recession. This did not come as a surprise to many, as the Bureau defines a recession this way, and I quote, A recession is a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy, normally visible in production, employment, and other indicators. A recession begins when the economy reaches a peak of economic activity. It ends when the economy reaches reaches its trough. Between trough and peak, the economy is in an expansion, unquote. Everyone realizes that the pandemic shut down the country earlier this year, causing a significant decline in economic activity. Though not surprising, headlines announcing the country is in a recession will cause consumers to remember the devastating impact the last recession had on the housing market just over a decade ago. Real estate market, however, is a totally different position than it was then, as Mark Fleming, chief economist at First American, explained, I quote, many still bear scars from the Great Recession, and many may expect the housing market to follow a similar trajectory in response to the coronavirus outbreak. But there are distinct differences that indicate the housing market may follow a much different path While housing led the recession in 2008-2009, 
This time it may be poised to bring us out of it, unquote. Four major differences in today's real estate market. One, families have large sums of equity in their homes. Two, we have a shortage of housing inventory, not an overabundance. Three, irresponsible lending no longer exists. Number four, home price appreciation is not out of control. We must realize that a recession does not mean a housing crash will follow. And three of the four previous recessions prior to 2008, home values increased. In the other one, home prices depreciated by only 1.9%. Bottom line, yes, we are now officially in a recession. However, unlike 2008, this time the housing industry is in much better shape to weather the storm that's the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by the Area Trusted Real Estate Professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Get your report. It's free. To the chat today, or we are chatting today, Jeff Ball, Friendly Hills Bank, is with us. I, I, I used to say is in the house, but I guess we can't say that right now. Being Well, not in the same house anyway. We're both in different areas. I like the other way better. I like that relationship where we can actually sit and chat with each other. But we do what we can. So this morning, our idea is we wanted to, to chat. We went through it, and, and Jeff gave us some amazing statistics. Four and a half million loans funded. Unbelievable. And Jeff, what was that, a month maybe? Yeah, that's that's the history of the program. So we've been going. Uh, there were two phases to the program, Ron. There was an initial phase. And that ran out and then Congress appropriated more money, which the, the president signed. And so now we're in this second phase of the program. But there's actually still quite a bit of money that's still available for people that have not gone out and gotten a PPP loan. Um, as of uh, going into this week, there's about $130 billion still available under the program that can be funded. So uh, the program's not um, over. The applications are being taken all the way through the end of this month. So if small businesses have not yet taken advantage of the program, uh, there's still the opportunity to do so. And there's been some recent changes to the program as well. Interesting. Okay. So once somebody gets the loan, I mean, from what I, from my understanding, and, and obviously you'll, you'll have to fill in the blanks for us is we would go and we would, we would, apply on what we might call a short form, get the money if we qualified based on that short form, it becomes a loan just like every other loan with it, but other than a real small interest rate. And then if we fill out more paperwork or go through an additional process, then it can become forgivable. Am I about right? Yeah, let me walk you through it, Ron, because it's, it's important to understand a, a big reason why this program was so attractive for many small business owners was because it did have this forgiveness aspect to it. So let's first start with the application, because as I said, there are still monies available if small business owners have not tapped into it. And hopefully what we talk about today won't scare them enough to not do it, because for some that have gotten the loans, they're starting to wonder what they got into. But essentially, it's based upon the amount of your payroll going into the crisis. And if you look at what your monthly payroll expense was going into the crisis, two and a half times that amount is what you were eligible for up to a maximum, which was around 10 million. So that wouldn't most small, but what you would define as a small business wouldn't get to that level. So it was really geared towards the small businesses and the intention the reason the amount was driven around the amount of your payroll, it was intended to help give businesses the monies so that they could keep people on their payroll and not have to lay them off as a result of the drop in economic activity due to the virus situation. So two and a half times your monthly payroll. Now, what the loan was originally structured with, how most of our current borrowers went into the loan understanding is that over the first eight weeks after your loan is funded, you document the amount of your payroll. And that amount, plus some other expenses, you have the opportunity to apply for forgiveness, meaning that that amount that you qualify for, based primarily on your payroll expenses, can be removed from the principal of your account, including interest. So a great opportunity for small businesses that are looking 
to keep employees on their roll. Unfortunately, as this came out, there was a lot of hype around money running out and people rushing to get in for the money and not really thinking about the timing of that eight weeks. So for many of our borrowers, they are now in week six or seven and next week will be week eight for some of them. Some of them are in week eight right now. And so all of this measurement, all that they've been doing around the forgiveness process, we're pretty much through that. And many of your listeners are probably aware that there was a law that was just passed last week, which is revising the program so that instead of looking at the first eight weeks, you can actually look at 24 weeks. So it gives businesses more time but unfortunately for a lot of these borrowers, it's too little too late because they're already through most of that eight week period that they're dealing with. But the consistent theme of the program is paycheck protection. And if you're using the funds to pay your employees, you can have as much as 100% of your loan forgiven. So it's almost like at the end, it's a grant that you received over that period of time to cover your payroll during that, during that covered period that we just described. So you, 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 I followed almost everything that you had on there until you got to the, the revised part of the law where it went from eight weeks to 24 weeks. So if somebody was got in at the very beginning, are they under a, the, a old program or do they get moved into the new program? So, Part of the complication, I, I, I compliment SBA on getting this program up and running so fast, okay? If we had had the time to design this without any time pressure, it probably would have taken two years to build the perfect loan program. Because again, you're trying to take a standardized loan program and apply it to all small businesses, which in and of itself is an unbelievable challenge. But they got it up and running. The reality is we're building an airplane while we're while it's flying through the air. And now just this last week, we got calls for a whole new design of the aircraft, which is now going to have to get implemented. So there are some changes that are coming, but essentially what the current PPP borrowers need to know is that where in the past, when you took out your loan specifically, the amount of forgiveness was based upon what your expenses were for the first eight weeks after you were, had your loan funded that eight weeks is now being extended out to 24 weeks. So as I said, for most of these borrowers, they're already way more than halfway into the process. So it may be too little too late. And I know a lot of our borrowers have been using the funds to pay people for hours that they're not even working because of the fact that it has this forgiveness provision. But in the simplest form, instead of measuring your costs over eight weeks, you now have the ability to extend that out to 24. And as you know, when laws are passed, it's then up to the bureaucrats to write the rules that follow those laws. And we're waiting for those rules to come out. But based on what's contained in the law, we do know that it goes from the eight weeks to the 24 weeks. Exactly how that will be implemented will come out in guidance that we will hopefully have within the next few days. That's pretty fascinating. And I think it's gonna be very, very helpful just because we know that there were a lot of, and I still hear about a lot of people are saying, you know, something I'd rather stay on unemployment because I get that, you know, if I was making $15 an hour, I'm going to get what I think the unemployment gives you 70% of that. And then you get that extra $600 a week. They're happy to be on the unemployment while that lasts. And the, and the employer is saying, Hey, I want you back. I'm getting my business up and running. And now I've got to train somebody else. They don't have the opportunity to even get them back. Right. But, but Ron, the program addresses that. And there is a, an element of the forgiveness, which provides credit to a business under that exact scenario. Let's say you were working for me prior to the crisis. I had to lay you off. I now want to hire you back. And you say, no, Jeff, I don't want to come back to work. I'm happy to just stay and collect my unemployment plus 600 bucks. I'm not coming back. There are provisions within the forgiveness of the program that give you credit for that. You just have to have it documented. And like any government program, documentation is key. So what businesses need to be doing right now is documenting where they're spending that money. And all of our borrowers, we outlined it for them from the very beginning. And this part has not changed. You need to be making sure 
that a significant portion of the proceeds are being used for payroll and you need to be documenting that fact. So if that employee is not willing to come back, you need to make sure it's documented, whether it's an email or a memo to file, something that can show that they don't want to come back. And because you have extended the offer to return and they declined it, there are provisions in the forgiveness which will give you credit for that and not count amount against the amount of uh, forgiveness for your loan. That's great, because I, I, that is the first time I've ever heard anybody uh, articulate that part of it. So that's some, that's some great information right there alone is uh, um, for, for people. We're going to take a real quick break. Note to producers, we're going to skip our Your Credit Matters today so we can talk more with Jeff Ball. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. More with Jeff Ball when we come back. You can reach me anytime, our off-air number. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio, on Twitter at Ron Siegel. We'll be right back. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. 145502 and Cal BRE 018694521866775. And You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800-306-1990. I will tell you today, your Credit Matters segments are always brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It's wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solutions for you. Continuing our conversation this morning, Jeff Ball is with us. Friendly Hills Bank is the name of the company. We are in learning mode today. We're learning about the, the PPP program, Payroll Protection Program and the the disaster relief program that's all geared around the pandemic program that came out to spend trillions of dollars over and it developed in in days i mean it was amazing the program that's come out and you know if, if we had a decent media in this country the administration and i have no idea who it was i know secretary mnuchin was was very very involved in it as well as others but they'd be getting unbelievable amounts of praise for how quickly they came out with a program along with the SBA and their administrator and rolled out a program to get trillions of dollars into an economy that was shut down overnight. Well, now we're dealing with some of the methods that are going to go into forgiving the money. The money got out, but now do we have to pay it back or do we get to give it that Uncle Sam write the check and cover the tab? 
And we're learning about that from Jeff Ball today. So how do we deal with this forgiveness, Jeff? I know that's probably going to be more than we can get done in, a, in an eight-minute segment, but... Yeah, the, there's a lot to cover, Ron, and I'm happy to come back if your um, listeners want to get more details. Um, we can do that in a future show. But essentially, the way that the program works is, um, and, and I'm gonna, my comments here are really addressed more specifically to people that already have their loans out. And it doesn't matter what lender you're with because the program is standardized. So it's the same program no matter who your, your lender is. But essentially, now that you are into or once you get past eight weeks since the date in which your loan is funded, you now have to apply to the SBA through your lender for the forgiveness. And whereas the first application, the actual application to get the loan, which I'm holding right here, anybody watching on video can see, this is a simple four page document to apply for the loan. To apply for the forgiveness, we're talking about a far more complex 11 page document. And on the surface, it looks very confusing. So I'm gonna to try to break it down very quickly, recognizing the amount of time we have. Essentially, the full amount of your loan can be forgiven as long as you're using it on payroll and as long as you've used the money to bring back the employees that you had pre-crisis. And there are three specific areas in which your loan forgiveness could be reduced. The first is based upon how much you're paying your employees. So if you have an employee that was making $30 an hour and post-crisis uh, during this eight week period, you decided to pay them $15 an hour, then you're gonna get hit based on the fact that they have more than a 25% reduction in the amount that they're getting paid. So in the application, you have to go employee by employee look at how much they made during the first three months of the year, compare it to what you paid them during the eight weeks following your loan funding, and you're gonna compare those two on an annualized basis. And if you are paying them more than 25% less, then that amount more than 25% is gonna get deducted from your forgiveness. Now there are provisions. If you have returned them to their proper level of pay. So if you lowered their pay, and then by the end of June, June 30th, you brought them back, then you don't have to count that drop in pay. So like any program with the government, there's conditions, right? But that's the first way your loan could be reduced. The second way it could be reduced, Ron, is if you actually drop the number of employees that you have, and it's measured by FTE, but you're essentially looking at how many employees did you have going into the crisis, um, before you funded your loan, how many employees did you have during the time after you got your loan funding and comparing? And if you dropped your staffing by a certain percentage, the amount of your forgiveness is going to go by that percentage. So let's say we had 10 employees and we lowered it to eight. That's a 20% drop. So whatever your calculated forgiveness is, you're going to reduce it by 20%. And the third way that it can be hit is based on a minimum amount has to be spent on payroll costs. Previously, that was 75%. And based on the law that was recently passed, it's being reduced to 60%. So if you didn't spend at least 60% of the money on payroll costs, then the amount of your forgiveness could be reduced. It's a lot of complicated formulas. The application is built top down when it really should have been done bottom up but it's extremely important that borrowers focus on this application now. And if you go onto our website, friendlyhillsbank.com, under our COVID-19 tab, you can pull down a PDF that has the full application so that you can see what it is you'll be working with. That's, well, that's a, that's a lot of stuff in there. And are they, when you talk to, there's a few different questions. Number one, uh, simple guy here, what is FTE? Full-time equivalency. And so, Basically, if you have an employee that's a salaried employee or that works 40 hours a week or more, that counts as one. If it's an employee that works less than 40 hours a week, then it's a number less than one, depending on how many hours that they work. And to make it more complicated for you, Ron, they provide, there's two ways you can calculate FTE. You just have to be consistent through the application, but it's all <laughs> described in there. And hopefully um, your listeners are with a lender 
that uh, is like us that's going to spend the time and help educate um, so that they can understand the process and the application. Even more reason that you really need to be with somebody with a relationship-based lender, just because I mean, you go on to you go to the, the to a, a website-based lender, and you don't even get to talk to anybody, so you're gonna gonna really be confused. So it sounds to me like I would be better off instead of reducing my staff, reducing the amount by twenty percent, instead of reducing staffing by twenty percent, reducing payroll by twenty. Correct. Yes, under that type of scenario, or if you have reduced it. Just make sure that you get it back up within less than 25% reduction by June 30th, and then you will qualify for that exemption that I described. It should also be pointed out that the loans are two years. Um, recent legislation extended it to five. That extension to five is at the um, discretion of your lender. Most lenders do want to keep this within two years, and most lenders went into the program anticipating that the majority of the loans will be forgiven. But if you do have a two-year loan, you have six months without payment requirement, and then it goes into an 18-month amortization. So you really do want to go through with the forgiveness part and make sure you have the proper documentation so that you don't get stuck with that big payment. Now, when you mentioned the idea of the number of employees, and we talked earlier about people not wanting to come back. So if I had 10 employees, two don't want to come back, so I hired two new people, does that still count as 10 employees? It does. So when I talked about that example of 10 reduced to eight, let's assume that we had 10. We had two of them that we laid off. We're now at eight. That's a 20% reduction. But let's say both of those employees, we offer for them to come back so we can get back to 10 and they say no, we can still count those two FTEs when we do our measure. So it would go from 10 down to eight. And then because they refuse to come back, it brings it up to 10, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's that's great information yeah. right there because there's a lot of people, I think a lot of small businesses, that's going to be a, a, a key component of great information, Jeff. I really appreciate you spending the time. I know how busy you've been in helping the, the bank's clients and taking care of the community. So I really appreciate you coming here and helping out our, our, our audience, our community, because we're going to be sharing this message throughout uh, the, the community. And I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, I'm happy to do it. It's important for people to understand. And Ron, I appreciate all you do in helping to keep people uh, informed on so many different things that are so important to what we do. Thank you for all you do as well. Thank you. As always, we ask, set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Uh-huh.